What's up? This is the one, and you're watching the Sport of Kings. Wildcats. Wildcats. What they call me, the one, the one and only. I make sure your girl is never lonely. It's the Sport of Kings. Football. Welcome to week nine of the National Football League. I'm your host, Jodeci Dion. In my opinion, I give the NFL two more years before they totally take away individuality in the league. I definitely see a league appearing that has football players only having the logo on their helmet and the number on their backs. No names. It seems more and more these days they're trying to get rid of some of the old guard players, some of the guys who were around in the league when it was a lot funner, when there were individuals, when there were characters in it. And it seems like they're definitely trying to get rid of them one way or another. By using the media to overexpose and exaggerate certain situations that happen amongst players and their teams. Take T.O., for instance, and Randy Moss. Both old school players, both guys full of personalities. And if a situation happens amongst them, it's blown out proportion. You know, T.O. is a cancer. He destroys teams. Uh, Randy Moss, not a great team player. He only plays when he wants to. Even though there's footage of him in the locker room being a great team player, being a leader. When there's footage of him being triple and double team. Of course he doesn't catch the ball when there's three guys on him. But, you know... The media, that's how they do things. In the past, e even though there were great quarterbacks, there were also great other players in other positions, and everybody got their shine on. Now, it seems like the league is trying to weed out great receivers, like they already did with great running backs, and now you just have a pure quarterback league where only the quarterback face is the face they want to present to the world. And I think it's going to be real boring for the league in the future. It's time to see who... For week eight, David Garrard went 17 out of 21 passes, throwing for 260 yards and four touchdowns, as his Jaguars put an ass whooping on the Cowboys, 35 17. The one punch wonder, LeGarrette Blunt, rushed for 120 yards on 22 carries and two touchdowns, as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Arizona Cardinals. And finally, Antonio Gates caught five passes for 123 yards and one touchdown as the San Diego Chargers beat the Tennessee Titans 33-25. Garrard, Blunt, and Gates for week eight. Welcome to your one and only predictions for week nine. Posting an overall record of 17 and 12 and going two for one last week. Let's continue the upward swing. Game number one, 12 p.m. at the Georgia Dome. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers head to Atlanta to play the Hot Falcons. The winner will be the leader in the NFC South. And I'm going to give it to the Falcons. They're playing at home. They're hot. And I still think the Buccaneers are way too young to finally make that step to being the best team in the South. So the game goes to the Falcons. In game number two, we head to Philly as the Indianapolis Colts play the Philadelphia Eagles. The Vic is back, and this time he's going to head ahead against Peyton Manning. It should be a good game, but I think Michael Vick will be rusty, and so I'm giving the victory to the Colts. And finally, a game I'm just talking about because it brings back some old school love. The uh, Kansas City Chiefs head to Oakland to play the Raiders. It takes me back to the old school days when KC and the Raiders were good. When Derek Thomas and Neil Smith, my boy Nick Lowry was playing. Versus Bo Jackson, Marcus Allen, Tim Brown, Harvey Williams. Yeah, it's old school love. 90s style. But I think the Chiefs are a better team than the Raiders right now. And so I think they're going to win in a close game. Well, that's it for this week, people. I'll be back next week with an update on my fantasy football progress. This is your boy, Jodice Dion. Peace.